Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. One of the really interesting sub-stories following Elon Musk's lawsuit against OpenAI and Sam Altman is the way in which other foundation model companies have raced out to try to fill the void left by OpenAI not announcing new things with their own announcements. Now, how much this is opportunistically taking advantage of what might be a legal process going on on OpenAI's side versus just fortuitous timing for those other labs is not exactly clear, but it is notable that this week alone we've got two new advanced foundation models. Claude 3, of course, we have discussed extensively. It is the first model, including Gemini Advance, that I've seen widely considered by people who use it to be just straight up better than GPT-4. This is impressive, but of course, it's worth noting that GPT-4 has been out for over a year, effectively an eternity in AI time, and the bigger question from a competitiveness standpoint is what GPT-5 will look like. Still, it is notable that we finally have some amount of commoditization at that GPT-4 level, and even some advances that are being won. Inflection has always been going after a slightly different prize. The company's Pi chatbot is meant to be a personal AI. As Inflection co-founder and CEO Mustafa Suleiman writes, Pi blends helpful IQ with friendly EQ. The use case that Pi is going after is the anti-loneliness use case, the someone to talk to about anything going on in your life use case, not necessarily the process my data, help me figure out new business strategy use case. They are certainly the most scaled company going after that opportunity, and so it's important to look at their results, not just in the context of how they compare from a benchmark standpoint, but also what it means to be pursuing this different type of AI. So the benchmarks are looking pretty good. On things like the MMLU, the GPQA, mathematics, coding, and common sense, Inflection 2.5 performs significantly better than Inflection 1 and is creeping up on GPT-4 levels. What's notable about that is that they used only about 40% of the computing power that GPT-4 reportedly used for training. In other words, they're winning some efficiency somewhere along the process. Inflection's announcement post about 2.5 reads, Meet the world's best personal AI. They write, Inflection 2.5, our upgraded in-house model, is competitive with all the world's leading LLMs like GPT-4 and Gemini. They note that they've made particular strides in areas of IQ-like coding and mathematics, which, quote, translates into concrete improvements on key industry benchmarks, ensuring Pi always pushes at the technological frontier. They've also brought web search to Pi, meaning that it's not limited in information to whenever its trading date cutoff is. One of the things that I think is notable about this announcement, and specifically their emphasis on coding within this announcement, in previous PR moments, Inflection has intentionally downplayed its interest in things like coding. It's basically said that that's not what this AI is supposed to be about, so it's not a big concern for us. However, we also got comments from Mark Zuckerberg not too long ago, where he was discussing the difference between Llama 2 and Llama 3, and the extent to which they found that increased performance around coding led to benefits in other areas. Basically, as they increased the capacity of Llama to code, it was able to solve more and different types of problems that weren't necessarily computer science or coding problems. Given that Inflection is now talking about coding and mathematics as a part of the improvements, without changing anything about their mission for a personal AI, I wonder if they're finding that as well, that coding and math knowledge actually leads to better performance overall, even outside those domains. Inflection also gave us some statistics for the first time. According to their announcement post, they now have 1 million daily active users and 6 million monthly active users. In total, those users have exchanged more than 4 billion messages with Pi, and the average conversation with Pi lasts 33 minutes. One in 10, they say, lasts over an hour, and about 60% of the people who talk to Pi on any given week come back the following week. The point being that they're arguing that their personal AI is a very deeply engaging and sticky experience. Emphasizing those long session times and frequency of return is their evidence of that. In follow-up interviews, Mustafa Suleiman said that Pi's user base has been growing around 10% a week for the past two months, so these numbers are not likely to stand still. Now, for some comparison in numbers... OpenAI said last November at Dev Day that it had 100 million weekly active users, but then I noticed in their blog post response to Elon Musk earlier this week, they seemed to claim that they had hundreds of millions of daily active users. I don't know if that is a typo or a misspeak, but if it is not, it seems like ChatGPT is experiencing some significant growth as well. One other thing that makes Pi a little bit different, perhaps because of its more personal type of interaction and use case, it actually launched without a business model built in. Obviously, the ChatGPTs and co-pilots of the world have free versions and then paid versions, and the intention is for Pi to have some sort of paid version, although it sounds like they haven't fully resolved yet what the business model is actually going to be. I've found that Pi still remains really divisive, not in the sense that some people are super against it or anything like that, but that some people just don't understand why this would have a lot of demand. Carlos E. Perez at Intuit Machine on Twitter writes, I keep being underwhelmed with Pi. I don't understand what the hype is here. Can anyone explain? 
He continued, I guess it's meant to be conversational and thus has an entirely different use case from what we find in GPT-4 or Claude. I guess this kind of UI makes sense for a more chaotic knowledge discovery process. Professor Ethan Mollick writes, I think we should be talking about Inflections Pi more. They released a near GPT-4 class upgrade to their AI this week in service of a very different vision of AI, one designed to be your best friend rather than an assistant. And it seems to be working for better or worse. To give a little bit of a clarification on where he might fall on that better or worse spectrum, he adds, the road to her, referencing the Joaquin Phoenix movie. Anyway, he continues, worth trying to get a sense of. And so I will leave it on that note. I think that like Ethan says, by sheer virtue of the fact that they are trying to do something so different, if you're paying attention to the AI space broadly, at least spending a little bit of time engaging with it and understanding what it's about and what the implications might be and which type of people might be attracted to it can probably teach you something about the evolution of the AI space overall. For now, though, that will do it for today's AI Breakdown. I appreciate you listening or watching wherever you are. And until next time, peace.